Have you ever wondered why those hypnotic techno tracks, those raw, deep kind of tracks, even though they only have like one synth and it doesn't seem to really change over time, they still keep being interesting for five minutes, for six minutes. It kind of feels like a loop, but it's still working. How does this work? We're gonna find out now. So this video is gonna be plenty of that. So today is all about hypnotic sequences and how to do them. And I want to show you one very, very easy technique, um, how to work it through. And I would say we start by looking at the tool that I'm using uh, most of the times. And it's the ML185 sequencer. It's a Max for Life tool. It's available for free. So make sure to check it out uh, in the Ableton store, right? And what is sequencing? What makes a sequence hypnotic and everything, right? So let's talk about this first. So sequencing basically means you have a like a part, like a division of time, right? Let's say one bar or half a bar, and you have a sequence of notes repeating over that phrase, right? So you have the phrase of half a bar, and then you have like eight notes, and those eight notes, the eight notes that you set are repeating every like every half a bar once again once again once again so hypnotic techno oftentimes revolves around the sequences but you could even say like an arpeggiator for example is making a sequence right you could like sequence is a big term but when we talk about it in this video we're referring to those repeating sequences short short patterns right and oftentimes what's interesting about them is that in hypnotic techno, they're not really following any scale or something, but they're rather just feeling a little random, right? So let's start by just like playing what's happening here. If you if you put the, the sequencer on a track and do nothing, uh, for sure we have to make sure it's playing. This is what it sounds like. And uh, you know, now it's playing root note only. So what we could do for sure is we could put different steps in here like plus 3 minus 5 plus 11 minus 5 minus 7 plus 2 plus 1 0 I don't know it's already sounding pretty cool okay <laughs> yeah so you could do that but uh, oftentimes it will be a little bit difficult to find something that is cool here because you, it's a little bit different. It's a, it's difficult rather to, to put in notes that are not like in the scale together, right? It's difficult to find something that's actually not matching, but it matches. But it's also not really good to have only notes that are in the scale. Like for example, let's make a very, very easy pattern like something like this let's say while it sounds cool it's not the best for hypnotic techno because it feels resolved right every note makes sense no not good but if you just like let's say randomly move some of those around this is where it gets interesting right so wouldn't it be nice to have a way to just have random notes on there? <laughs> okay, maybe you spotted it already. It's okay, I'm just making a joke. So a lot of sequences, actually almost all of them, have a randomizing function. So if you click that button here, be careful. Look at this. Completely random. All the steps are random. And now let's have a listen. <laughs> So there's kind of two sequences happening. First of all, the high notes, and then we have like low notes, bum 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 bum, and that's very interesting. It's hard to come up with these patterns by yourself. It's possible for sure, but 
the randomization is a good step to just go there, you know, and uh, just try a bit. <laughs> So somehow they all sound pretty cool and um, yeah, that's just the, the workflow you have oftentimes. You, you click random a bit and you wait for something that is cool to work with it and to emphasize the things you like, maybe take something you don't like out of it, whatever. So how do we do that? Well, you can see that the sequencer is actually on a channel which is not active. So we could do it like this, that's for sure. We could enable this channel. We have a preset on here. I don't know, something, but uh, we could also get the MIDI on a different channel, like MIDI from 8 Serum, monitoring to auto and activate the, the, like the input here. And then we're getting the MIDI signal from here to here. So now we can also record it. So now if we disable the sequencer and we're playing this pattern, we have the exact same notes that we're playing here, right? So this is a way to record so actually our sequence is only like this, right? You have to make sure this is only half a bar. And now you can just, you can freely do whatever you want to, right? Whatever you like, right? You can take away notes, you can add notes, it's completely up to you. So there's endless possibilities to work like this. And um, some of these <laughs> I want to show you now. What's always pretty interesting when we are working with a sequencer is to change the length of the pattern. That can be done here. So like this, we are playing all the eight notes, right? But if we go to, let's say, five and do it like this once again. We get this polyrhythmic feeling because we have five notes over like uh, a straight pattern and the five notes are not straight. So we can record this and have a look. Let's check it out. You can see how it's moving. This note is here, but now it's here, and then it's here, and then here, right? Why isn't it here, and then here, and then here? Because the pattern is not divided, right? In the same way this, this is divided, like it's not eight notes, or four notes, or two notes. Uh, but it's five notes, so the loop is here. So it will always move around polyrhythm. We should actually do a, uh, a video on polyrhythm. Let me note that. <laughs> anyway, for now that's uh, that's fine. I think you get the idea. And now there's a very interesting concept I think, which is about resolving this polyrhythm. So you could either have the polyrhythm running for the whole track, so then you would loop like this. And then you would always like have this polyrhythm. No matter where you are in the track, you could never say where the one is, kind of, you know? But what you could do is you could resolve this polyrhythm over the course of half a bar. So now you have a straight pattern, eight notes, but there's still some kind of poly feeling inside, right? But it's not completely poly, right? You could also do this over the course of a bar. A full bar would be nice. Or maybe even two bars. 
So I, I think you get what's happening now. We can make sure where to reset the the kind of the, the loop in the brain, right? So we could even make it longer. That's uh, like we go. All right, let me fold this. It's actually a bit easier. Wow, it looks so funny. Okay, we can go like this. <laughs> And we could like we could go further for sure. So having those patterns either resolve or not resolve is a technique that can be used very well. You could also have like a resolved part and a not resolved part in the track. You don't have to decide. So very interesting ideas here. And um, this video should really inspire you to just grab a sequencer of your choice. Uh, I like this one, but let me know in the comments if you want me to feature more sequences in the future. Definitely down to do this. And uh, yeah, just play around. Get those random sequences rolling. You try a different length. Try seven, for example. <laughs> Try, I don't know, six. Try playing the pattern not in this direction, but in this direction. Or both. You can even like make this step longer. Like this is one sixteenth. Let's make it two sixteenth. And this also. Make this three. And let's go to five. <laughs> you can see endless possibilities working with that. You can also add uh, swings, which is pretty cool, I think. Like this. And I haven't showed you the best part yet. You can also randomize the velocity of each step, which is so cool and so important because let's say, I'm, let's grab a cool sequence. Oh, I love this when it goes from very low to very high. Uh, okay, now this is cool. Now let's go to velocity here and randomize the velocities. So if we click random here, it only randomizes the velocities, not the pitch, right? It only randomizes where we are right now. So let's do this, randomize. Ooh, and now it gets, uh, now it comes alive because the different nodes have different velocity levels, right? You, we have to make sure that there's stuff connected to the velocity, uh, but the sound we are playing right now is this one. And you can see that there's velocity on the amp, velocity on the cutoff. So, Definitely different stuff happening. And it just sounds so cool. Wow, let me record that. So somehow this is endless inspiration and it doesn't only have to be used for hypnotic sequences. Those sequences can be used for drums, they can be used for arpeggios, whatever. You can do anything you want to. Just have to make sure at some point you record it and then use it the way you want to. And you know that every video on the channel gets you a free downloadable goodie. This time I prepared a lot of sequences for you with different sounds. I played them in the beginning. and you can get uh, those sequences as a free download so make sure to follow the link in the description and have fun playing around with the sequences let me know in the comments if you want to see more like this hypnotic techno sequences how to make the drums maybe there or whatever is interesting for you arrangements let us know in the comments and until then have a good time and keep making music <laughs>